finally, what improvements in services can we expect over this year then? A tremendous improvement. We have a, a completion of a £46 million investment programme for the West of England line. New trains, 22 new trains arriving for the uh, Waterloo, Basingstoke, Exeter services and the new trains for the, uh, the uh, bank to the Waterloo, the drain. Peter Peel, thank you very much indeed for joining us tonight. I now hand you back to the studio in Newbury. A memorial service has been held in Kenya for Sean Devereaux, the Hampshire man killed by gunmen in Somalia. 28-year-old Sean from Yately near Camberley was shot dead two days ago in the town of Kishmayu, where he'd been working for UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund. Well, as we bring you the very first Meridian tonight, we'd like to take the chance to introduce ourselves properly. We'll be here every night, Monday to Friday at 6 o'clock. And in addition to the show based here in Newbury, we have sister programmes in Southampton and in Maidstone. And now to explain why we're called Meridian, we need that explanation. Here's Hannah O'Sullivan. <laughs> To get a clearer view of how the Meridian Broadcasting Company got its name, we're here in Greenwich, home of the prime meridian of the world. This is the Meridian Line. At this point, it measures naught degrees longitude, and it's the centre of the world's time zones. It cuts through the heart of Meridian's broadcasting region. Well, I hope... Uh, the name, in a sense, leads to what we hope to bring. We hope that the name and the, the logo is bright, friendly, accessible, and we hope that's what we're going to be. We hope we're going to be a station that uh, reflects what viewers want to see on ITV, that listens to what viewers tell us, uh, and that provides a, a terrific service for viewers in the South and Southeast. Meridian has divided the South into three areas with separate new services in Maidstone, Southampton and Newbury. There are reporters and crews at seven other sites. Fronting Meridian tonight in Southampton are Fred Dynage and Debbie Thrower. In Maidstone, Mike Debbins and Alison Holloway co-present the show. And in Newbury, Meridian tonight for the Thames Valley and North Hampshire is presented, as you know, by Andy Craig and My David. This summer, the £3 million Newbury News Centre underlined Meridian's commitment to local news. The shell of a run-down warehouse was transformed using the latest studio and newsroom technology. After a year of planning and sheer hard graft, it's finally all systems go. But there is one other definition of Meridian. In the dictionary, in between merger and meringue, it is, quote, a high point, especially of success or greatness. Watch this space. Hanno Sullivan on the Meridian Line in Greenwich for Meridian Tonight. Absolutely, watch this space. And as we're going to be here every day, we do hope you'll join us because we'll be awfully lonely without you. Absolutely. We've got some of the best facilities I've ever worked with before. And, and the furniture's not bad either, <laughs> is it? It's very nice That's indeed. Home for us. Well, I'll tell you, while we get our feet under the table, we'll take a short break. In a moment, we'll be up, up and away in Britain's biggest balloon flight. It's Berkshire as you've literally never seen it before.
and welcome back. Well, here on Meridian tonight, as well as comprehensive coverage of the day's news, we'll be taking an in-depth look at subjects which affect us all. This week, our reporter Sonia Legg is investigating the diet industry, just for those of us who made a New Year's resolution to lose weight. Her first report looks at the length some slimmers will go to as they search for the perfect body shape. This is what Jeff Ferris had for his Christmas dinner, a banana milkshake drunk with a straw. Jeff's jaws have been wired together by a dentist to help him lose weight. He's been unable to open his mouth for almost two months and lives entirely on liquid food and vitamins. So far he's lost three stones, but it hasn't been easy. Uh, I'm not getting the real hunger pains that I was getting the first two weeks. Uh, it's... I just sort of fancy food sometimes when I'm preparing something for someone else. You know, I'd very much love to take a bite of it. Jeff asked to have this rather extreme form of treatment after every other slimming method failed. Three years ago, he also lost his job. He's been unemployed since then and simply can't afford to pay for slimming clubs or special foods. He hopes being slim will help him get a job. I hope to get down to under 12 stone. Um, then I think I'll feel a lot more confident, a lot, uh, a lot better about myself. You know, I, do, I haven't got a lot of confidence. Uh, and some of that is, is obviously to do with the way I look. The National Health Service paid for his operation after he badgered his doctors to let him try it. They're generally reluctant to prescribe such drastic treatment. Some people would say perhaps that it is a rather extreme thing to do. Would you recommend that other people try this or is it something that just suits you in particular? Um, no, I, I think a lot of other people could do it because um, I've got the sort of temperament that can put up with things that I can't alter, or that I feel that I can't alter. So, um, I don't know, maybe it's a bit easier for me in that way. But I think other people could benefit from it who, who haven't lost weight in other ways. Jeff's rather extreme method of dieting isn't the only unusual way to slim. You could always have your stomach stapled, and of course there's cosmetic surgery for those of you with plenty of cash. But as well as modern medical treatments, some people say you can also slim using a rather more ancient form of treatment. Sent the needle, tension the skin, okay, insert the needle, okay, and just push it in, all right? And that's all there is to it. Acupuncture has been used for medical purposes for centuries, but in the past few years, its value as a slimming aid has been recognised. Basically, it works on the fact that it really increases your willpower to lose weight, and also it stimulates a feeling of well-being, and um, um, generally improves your metabolism. An increase in metabolism is, is one way of uh, um, stimulating a weight loss. Chris Wilshire has lost eight pounds in the four weeks she's been having the treatment. She's convinced it's not a coincidence. I've always had a weight problem. I've lost weight in the past, and within a few months I've always put it back on again, purely because I can't curb my appetite. Um, I comfort eat. Um, since I've been having acupuncture, uh, my appetite has reduced and I'm probably eating normally, um, like most other people do, instead of eating a lot when I'm depressed. Graham claims almost anyone can benefit from acupuncture, and he insists watching the needles being inserted is more painful than actually having the treatment. It's certainly not unpleasant by any means. Um, I find it very hard to relax normally, and when Graham leaves me 20 minutes with the needles in, I feel as if I'm floating on cloud nine. That's not quite the way Chrissy Wooden described this equally unusual way to lose inches. She's having ionothermy, a treatment which involves wrapping the body in clay and sending electricity waves into the fatty areas. I feel like someone's actually lifting my muscles up and dropping them again. Is it painful at all? Not at all, no. It's quite nice, actually. <laughs> and now, getting a contraction. It's quite comfortable. <laughs> ionothermy, or body wrap, is designed to make you slim for very short periods of time. Staff here claim it has four main effects. Breaks down cellulite, gets rid of retained water, improves muscle tone and improves the texture of the skin. But the main reason people pay £35 for one session is the inch loss. I've got a friend's party coming up and the dress that I've had is slightly too tight on the hips and the tummy. It's a bit uncomfortable so I thought by slimming down a little bit it's going to be easier to wear it. And you chose this instead of old-fashioned dieting? Well... Although I've dieted, I find I have to exercise for a long time beforehand to actually tone up. And this is like the quick, easy way. 
Unfortunately, most people who have ionothermy return to their original size within a few weeks. But that's a danger with many forms of dieting. Even Jeff Ferris is scared he'll return to his old habits once his jaw wires are removed in a few months' time. He's just hoping the memory of his suffering now will keep him on the straight and narrow. Sonia Legg, Meridian Tonight. Well, I'm joined now by Lindell Costain, the district dietitian based at the Royal Berkshire Hospital. Lindell, these methods look awfully extreme. Do they actually work? Well, it's very difficult to say whether or not they all work, and certainly they are extreme. The jaw wiring one that we saw um, in the first instance is one I could probably comment best of all. It's something that should only be done under strict medical supervision because there is such a danger of, of the person becoming inadequately nourished because you're on such a restricted diet. It also should only be really used for people who are quite overweight, quite obese, and whose weight actually does affect their health in a dangerous way. And finally, really for people who actually have tried just about every other more conventional method and uh, who've been through a proper assessment procedure to make sure that this won't be detrimental towards them. You've said these are dangerous. Are any of the others dangerous? Because you've said about nutrition, that you might not get as much nutrition as you need. That's obviously a danger when people are dieting, that they don't get what they need. That's right. And it's a very, very big uh, problem with crash dieting, short-term dieting, which rely very much on strict methods which uh, use very few foods, perhaps gimmicky combinations, and don't look at nutrition as, as the main message to get across. Even some of the calorie-controlled con diets can be too low in, in food just to get everything that you do need. Certainly some of the, for example, the acupuncture didn't actually mention food, so I'm not too sure what role that has to play, because certainly your weight is very much uh, controlled by the exercise that you do and what you actually put into your body in terms of the, the energy that you put in. Linda, thank you very much for joining us. Now it's back over to Andy, who's never going to have his jaws wide, I don't think. No, actually, I seem to hide my weight problem very well indeed, but there you go. <laughs> now it's time for our regular sports slot. In the coming months, we'll bring you all the news from your local team, whatever they might play. Plenty of racing tips too, we hope, and a few winners. But first tonight, after Reading's performance in the FA Cup, Chris Morn kicks off with football. What a weekend, Chris. Yes, absolutely right, Andy. A draw at Manchester City has landed Reading a lucrative replay next week. Elm Park expects a capacity crowd of more than...